Hello, it's Scott Manley here. I'm still uh, on in Scotland right now, so still don't have any video games or anything I can play. Uh, instead, I would like to talk about this new Kepler uh, star discovery or whatever. A lot of people have asked me about it, mostly because it's been in the news because of aliens. Well, aliens aren't actually uh, mentioned anywhere in the scientific paper, but the behaviour of this star is so odd and so many other scenarios have been excluded from contention that, you know, Alien starts to look more and more plausible. I mean, it's a long shot, but hey, you know, never never mind. I mean, seriously, some of the astronomers that are have looked at this are actually now considering, or they're trying to get some radio telescope time to listen for signals, because, you know, if they did find aliens, it would be pretty awesome. But okay, let's actually go back. Now, you've probably seen, you might have seen my other videos about Kepler, this is a star, I believe the designation is, and I've got to look at my screen here, it says it's KIC 8462852. It's actually from the original group of stars. Remember before the Kepler gyros failed, they had one group of uh, stars that they were looking at, and then after the failure they had two different locations because they started to use the sunlight to stabilise the spacecraft. So, they essentially have a camera on this and it's one of the thousands and thousands of stars in that field and they observe the light curve the variation in the brightness as the star has things pass in front of the star now this one was actually not discovered in the initial data pass because the original data pass was looking for periodic signals that were roughly similar to that of a uh, planet passing in front of the sun now, a planet the size of jupiter passing in front of something like the sun would be, you know, less than 1% of the brightness, and it would be periodic, it would happen more than once. So this one didn't exhibit that behavior. The first brightness change, right, caused a something like 15% of the star's light to be obstructed. 15%, that's you know, pretty huge. Later, there were some other ones which were as high as, or as deep, let's say, because it's, it's a decrease in the brightness, 22%. These were not discovered by the automated systems because the people, uh, because what happened was after the automated systems went through it, it went through to another system where real humans were allowed to look at it. In fact, I believe it was members of the public were allowed to look at it. And this one was picked out as saying, what the heck is going on here? So, yeah, with these big numbers, people, the, the scientists started to look and try to exclude other scenarios. Was it an instrumental error? You know, for example, cosmic ray events could mess around with the electronics and generate spurious signals. So they checked that. No, it did not appear to be correlated to cosmic ray events. They uh, checked for other transits. They came up with the idea, maybe this could be not a single planet but a planet that has been destroyed and its material has been dispersed you know if you take the matter in a planet and then spread it out you could easily cover a large part of the sky or a large part of the solar disk with it and you know with the different uh, with the complex dynamics of a, a debris ring it's possible that uh, you could come up with some scenario where you could block 15 percent and then 20 percent there'd be a lot of area the pr the argument against this primarily is that when you have a lot of dust in space, the dust heats up, and so you start to get what's called an infrared excess, right? Essentially, the light, right, visible light hits the particles, the particles warm up, and then they re-emit infrared light. So stars with dust disks, they have this infrared excess, and that's characteristic of a solar system being formed they did not find an infrared excess. So, yeah, that that was excluded. Another idea was perhaps it could be, say, a swarm of comets or something. And the hypothesis is that as another star passes close enough to the star system's Oort cloud and causes a big, you know, a huge number of comets to come down. And those would be kind of cold and the might somehow block, you know, large amounts of material. You know, the thing is, it's really hard to imagine anything on this scale. 22% of a solar disk, you know, the sun is huge. Blocking 22% of that, you know, it's kind of hard. So yeah, uh, this is when the, the scientists started looking at, you know, interesting possibilities. And he they started talking to someone called um, Jason Wright, who has been 
studying exoplanets, but also coincidentally, he researches how to look for signatures of advanced alien civilizations in the Kepler data, right? So <laughs> this is where the journalists start to join the dots and say, oh, it must be aliens. Um, that's a long way from being proven, but if it were aliens, it would be awesome. Uh, probably not aliens. There's probably some really amazing explanation for this. I mean, like if this, this star on its own with that kind of light curve behavior is going to be a fascinating object, even if it isn't aliens, because nothing of this kind of behavior has been seen so far. Anyway, so on the aliens front, what could it be? Well, there's something called a Dyson sphere you might have heard of. It's the idea is that you essentially build a giant solar collector around the star. And in fact, you could imagine a complete sphere capturing the entire energy output of a star. That's something that a super advanced civilization could do. I mean, it's not completely ridiculous that we could do that one day. I mean, if you're wanting to gather the energy of a star, that's the best way to do it. You can't really stop a star. You can't turn it on and off or whatever, like a fusion reactor. If you want a giant fusion reactor generating tons of energy, then a Dyson sphere is the way to go. So there's a hypothesis that maybe this is a sign of an alien civilization building a Dyson sphere to capture the energy from this star and therefore power their vast things that they need lots of power for. I don't know, maybe they have a lot of people playing video games or something. I, you, you know... What do you need that amount of energy for? Well, uh, basically anything. You know, as civilization has advanced, one of the things is the amount of energy that we've been harnessing has gone up as the amount of, as technology has advanced and everything. So that is a hypothesis. And honestly, I hope we get some follow-up observations on this because then perhaps we might get an idea of what's really going on. Uh, if it is aliens, then it would be the greatest, uh, one of the most important discoveries in human race. If it's not, and it's just a really interesting star, then it will be a fascinating piece of astronomy. And I will be, I for one will be really interested. So yeah, uh, take a look at it, take a look at the papers. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.